the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Acts 2.42 And they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine the bible says this is the early church they continued in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers this is what made them mighty this was the scope of their spiritual activity every time they gathered they listened to a thorough exegesis of doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers Acts chapter 5 and verse 28. Acts chapter 5 and verse 28. Now watch this. When they caught the apostles, their concern was not just the people, the human bodies. The threat to the government of the day was the doctrine. This was what the devil did not want. Saying, did we not strictly command you that you should not teach in this name. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. More than branches, more than programs, what was influencing the territory was doctrine. There is something you are teaching that is making Ambroba stop stealing. There is something you are teaching that is transforming society how come the men in a territory are suddenly becoming responsible corporately there is something you can trace the growth of society to the doctrine that fills that place you can trace the deprivation and the retrogression in society also it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true the quality of the life of people within a territory among other factors is a reflection of the quality of the truths that the spiritual leaders within that territory communicate you see africa is a very spiritual continent on average every week the average believer including an unserious believer submerges himself in some sort of spiritual training either a sunday service please don't feel i'm not you remember that this is what we're talking as men of god is that true we're examining a few things so this is not this is not a call to sarcasm whatsoever we're just challenging ourselves to rise to higher dimensions there is a sunday service maybe a tuesday service a wednesday service most likely a night vigil some kind of spiritual activity happening all week that means if i handpick a believer who has been within a christian circle for two three four years and i ask him basic questions about the christian faith he should be able to rise in defense of that truth otherwise we must hold the pastor accountable what is the content of your teaching not necessarily the insincerity in character may be a sincere person They have filled Port Harcourt with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon her head. Can you imagine that? Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. I want you to see why the apostles were effective. The Holy Spirit we have today is the same Holy Spirit they had. The God they pray to is the same God we pray to. But we are not seeing their results because there is a missing link. The doctrine they communicated is largely not the doctrine that we are communicating. And the emphasis that they placed on doctrine, we might not be pressing that far. Now I beseech you brethren, Paul is speaking, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. I like Paul. He's not mentoring based on opinions. 
He said, listen, listen. Everything you do should be referenced to this doctrine. There are people who cause offenses and division. How do we know that what they are saying is divisive? With respect to the doctrine that is being taught. It is based on doctrine. We can have the audacity to tell someone you are right. You are wrong. It is based on doctrine. We can judge prophecy and say it is true. You came back from heaven, but something is questionable about this encounter. You cannot just say, I don't like what you are saying. There has to be a reference to your defense. The reference is doctrine. The average believer is confused and cannot tell whether a thing is right or wrong. You see that? Because that doctrinal reference is not there. Let's look at two more scriptures. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. In fact, I think Paul's, Paul's, Paul's epistle to Timothy has about the largest in the New Testament now about the largest compendium of this word doctrine 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 because he was mentoring his son in the gospel here's what 4 verse 1 says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith the bible says and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons so the devil too has his mentorship system he can make you become something exact. There is a body of truth. Whether you choose to serve God or Satan, it's the same way you will grow. Doctrine. There is something called the doctrine of devils. A good person can teach the doctrine of devils. You don't have to be bad or fake. You just have to be ignorant. And there are many, many sincere doctrines in the body of Christ that need to be edited from the light of scripture you see there are four principal ways i wish we had time there are four principal ways the bible recommends that we know god knowing god is not a mystery there are four biblical channels only four channels if you ever want to know the god of the bible there are only four channels the bible recommends number one is scripture the first authorized channel that can help anyone know God is scripture. Are we together? Scripture reveals the character of God. Scripture reveals his modus operandi. So you know God when you study scripture. You can meet a believer who did not know anything about the Christian faith. And get that person saved. And hand over scripture. And teach that person scripture. And he can grow in the knowledge of God scripture number one number two the names of god we know god by exploring the dimensions of him captured in his name you would wonder why he's called the god of abraham isaac jacob rafa sikenu all of these names were dimensions of him the moment the nation of israel saw that dimension revealed they preserved it in a name so that every time their children wanted to learn that dimension they would draw that name from the archive of their experience and say look we never knew that god could move like this but when we saw it we said we'll not waste this experience we have to archive it for our children so they saved it you can use the names of god to learn him number three the third way that we know god is through the person jesus the christ the bible calls him the image of the invisible god calls him the word the logos of god that has been made flesh so i can know god when i study jesus i hope you know theologically speaking we're ministers of the gospel until jesus came nobody could accurately say they knew god there was a lot of haziness and confusion about God. Even among the prophets, they credited both good and bad to God. There was no standard, no reference. So one of the assignments of Jesus was not just to come and die. He came as a manuscript and a marking script. He came so that we will use him to start editing our ideas about God. Everything God said, Jesus manifested. Whatever you said God said that Jesus did not do, you are in error. 
So your assignment is to look unto him and begin to edit what the prophets and the law and every other person said about God. The things that superstition said about God, we compare it. Jesus came as a revelation of the Father. So I can look at Jesus. Are you seeing why the Bible was so detailed about his earth work because it does not want you to miss any information everything about his earth work it was more than a story it was god in action so he's saying study study how he treated children study what he did on crusade grounds what did he do when he saw the sick if it's true that god said i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness we can only verify if he's lying or not by looking at jesus how far did Jesus go to prove the love of the Father? He died. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down his life. So we know God did not lie because Jesus proved he was true. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. How do we know God is not lying? By looking at Jesus. The last enemy that can be destroyed in this earth realm is death. Whoever destroys death by leaving this earth and coming back into it at will you see there is a law nobody dies and comes back by himself it has to take someone in the earth to call you in but jesus showed that god was all powerful indeed by dying and calling himself back it was his entry back into the earth that led to psalm 24 lift up your heads O ye gates the gates were surprised why are you saying we should open nobody on earth is calling you when you were coming from heaven a prophet has called you but now you are out of the earth and we are not hearing anyone call you and he says don't mistake him just because a baby was called this man who is coming now is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle are we together so you know God by looking unto Jesus. If all you know about Jesus is that he just came and died for sinners, you've missed a major part of why he was here. His first assignment was to correct our aberrated view about the Father. How many of you have heard stories about people and you had all kinds of ideas until you met them? Or you met those who were very close to them and you felt so disappointed so broken and you said i'm sorry god forgive me i was told this ceo is not a good man now look at this five of my children now have jobs because of him and you go back and you keep repenting and say god forgive me that's what jesus came to do if you study jesus you know you are knowing god when there is a lot of repentance in your life because you should find a lot of gaps in the things you have blamed God about. Jesus. When it was time to feed 5,000 with two loaf, five loaves and two fish, he didn't say those who understood or heard me move one side. He fed everyone. So when the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, that even the king is fed by the increase in the field, it is true. Jesus came as the logos of God. The word made flesh, the logos. The, the, the word logos is the Greek word thoughts. The intent of a man that desires to find expression. Everything God was thinking, Jesus was living. Next time somebody says, I want to know you God. There's no mystery about it. What many people mean is I want to be caught up in the realm of the spirit. You will most likely meet familiar spirits. God's authorized channel is scripture if you cannot respect scripture that you can see it's not an angel that is invisible that you that's the law remember and then the last way we know god is through your experience in that order it is important but only the fourth your experience job said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ears now my eyes have seen you. Experience, you can build a track record about God by yourself. Oh, talk to our mothers and they will tell you, there is something about God they knew, not by preaching. 
when the woman was about to die because of her pregnancy she called upon the name of the lord and rolled on the ground and that baby lived so every time she sees another woman who says look i'm about dying she says sit down let me tell you something about god i didn't go to school oh but there is a song i raised in 1975 every time i am in trouble when i raise this song the nation of israel had songs that were like codes when it was clear that defeat was imminent they didn't just sing praise and worship you are good and your mercy if they started singing that song against you no matter how you were winning it was a code for victory please sit down this is not even what we're teaching no, remember what we're talking about doctrine i only digress because we are dealing with the issue of knowing god is god helping us the knowledge of god you want to know god scripture the names of god jesus your experience it's impossible to pass through this and not know god mm -mm. Mm -mm. hallelujah so back to doctrine one last scripture hebrews 13 and verse 9 hebrews 13 and verse 9 the bible says be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace not with meats which have profited them that have been occupied therein he's talking about several things paul was largely correcting a lot of errors a lot of imbalances and he began to teach them doctrine Who is a disciple a disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of scripture a disciple is one who accepts and helps in spreading the doctrines of scripture when we follow Christ we follow him because number one we accept and we believe the truths are we together yes and then number two we help in spreading it so when the bible says in matthew 28 let's look at it now you will understand what the bible is saying matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 here's what jesus said to us matthew 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all authority the word power there is the word exousia authority all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 on the strength of this information go ye therefore and teach are you seeing now he didn't just send us to preach to preach means to declare to teach means to explain to guide to mentor to bring into comprehension that's what it means to teach go ye and teach all nations all nations does not mean all countries all fields of endeavors are we together now all of the mountains go there and teach baptizing them in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and whilst you are doing this be assured that i am with you all way whilst you are doing this you can be sure that my divine presence is going with you even to the ends of the earth colossians chapter 1 paul speaking to the church in Colossae from verse 28 and 29 paul the assignment of presenting everyone he says whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man that in all wisdom we may present everyone mature or complete or whole in christ jesus 29 it says whereunto i also labor striving according to his walking which walketh in me mightily paul said look all my travels and everything you see me visiting the church in this the church in that correcting all kinds of things imbalances impartations travels all that i'm doing is i am striving to see to it that the body of christ and those committed to my care that i'm able to present them complete in Christ 
If you're still with me, please say amen. amen. So the course content for the believer's education is called doctrine. Every believer that comes under the influence of the doctrine of scripture will become something exact, something predictable, regardless denomination, regardless the approach to ministry. Now, we may not always agree in terms of our modus operandi. We may not agree in terms of our personalities here and there. But there are certain truths that are called the foundational pillars of the Christian faith. If you do not believe this, you are not a Christian. If you do not teach it, you are also not a Christian. There are certain things common to all women black white yellow african spanish there are things common to men regardless location regardless territory that's how it is when we talk about unity unity is not uniformity no we will never be the same verbatim our experiences with god our levels of transformation the systems of mentorship that we are under will create those differences but regardless what the divide is there are certain foundational pillars of the christian faith hebrews chapter 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundations of six of them. Number one, repentance from dead works. Number two, faith towards God. Verse two. Number three, the doctrine of baptisms. Number four, of laying on of hands. Number five, the resurrection of the dead. Number six, eternal judgment. And he prays a serious prayer in verse three. And this we will do. If God permits, there are foundational pillars. Please listen very carefully. You see, believers do not just grow because truth is taught. Truth has to be methodically arranged like a building to be able to mature the saints. Are we together? Now, please don't feel bad. Don't feel insult insulted. I apologize if you do so. But then imagine with me, for instance, that someone just gets saved completely not a christian and the first message he hears is on prosperity you see chances are that that person's christian experience will be wrecked into pieces because he's not learned how to crucify the flesh he's not built character are we together now exposing that person to that body of knowledge the truth is not it is truth but it will kill him it's not sequentially arranged he's not even equipped for the attacks that come by reason of that level of blessing. We must not just build believers. We must build believers methodically. Line upon line. Truth upon truth. Tomorrow is Sunday. Millions of pulpits around the world will be filled with men and women. Passionate men and women who will be teaching. Can we begin to make these adjustments? By focusing on doctrine. What we largely do is just a topical exegesis of the word. And for many people, I understand how burdensome it can be to preach and come up with messages. So sometimes you sit and say, ah, what have I not preached for a long time in this church? I'm tired right now. I have three services. Let's try faith. All right. So you listen to a message or two, just go online, get one or two scriptures, put things together. And you know the fearful thing about the grace of God is when you stand up here, it will look like you've been studying since last year. Because you are under the influence of that grace. That grace can cover shame in a tremendous way. But it's not an endorsement of your current state. You can stand and preach something off script completely. It may even be one of the most powerful messages you would have preached that year. And you go back repenting before God and say, Lord, thank you for covering for me. Me and you, we know that I don't have an idea of what happened on this stage. Come on, pastors. Do you know the reason why 
you fear teaching on the altar do you know the reason why you feel emotionally bullied by another man because you are teaching opinions when you are teaching doctrine the truths don't come from you it is the explanation and the exegesis of it that comes from you so there is no need to fear the body of truth is exact you finish and start again listen when it has to do with the knowledge of god our exploring god is infinite even in heaven we'll keep learning him but as far as the excelling of a believer on earth is concerned the body of truth allocated for our growth and maturity is finite you can cover the curriculum and start again and not feel guilty for going back it's not that you don't have new messages so the pressure is that ah let my members not say there are people teaching volume seven part one volume 8 part 5 and you are here it seems like you are struggling with something so that pressure pushes us into saying look what is the new thing i have not said save yourself that stress there is an exact body of truth that builds and provided that is what you are teaching no matter how simple find rest every other thing garnished on it is just the, the psychological prowess the intelligence and all of that but at the basic level everyone should be able to mature believers once you can understand and you can teach the course content is given to you already doctrine so there is no excuse there's no such thing as i don't have the gift of teaching i'm not really a teacher you know these guys are the ones who teach and then because of that we said you know what don't worry i even want to teach worship team come raise a powerful song let's start praying and then no 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 no. there are a few ministers around the world this nation and across africa they teach in about the most simple ways sometimes annoyingly simple but you look at the quality of men that they have raised do you know why because the content of their teaching is true they are methodical about it whether the lecturer is in uni lauren whether it's a yoruba lecturer whether it's an Igbo lecturer a south south lecturer a northern lecturer the person's accent his level of understanding etc is not is not too much to alter the curriculum so the same students can be taught by an Igbo lecturer a white man coming from the u.s a visiting professor from the uk and then people within that region and regardless the students you are sure that after four or five years you are going to graduate a predictable kind of people their accents may differ their abilities to explain there are lecturers respectfully speaking who are quite on the conservative side they can talk as if they are talking to themselves others are very engaging and happy those things are just added advantages once the truth is there the students will learn and their results will show they have learned it fine rest men of god the pressure that we are putting on ourselves to attain onto certain levels it is true that some of these gifts and some of these engracings come with um a level of charismatism around it i confess so once these kinds of things happen there is that there is that drive to want to be celebrated i understand but find rest tomorrow go on your pulpit and teach doctrine with power teach it with truth teach it with conviction when i was in the seminary when i was in the anglican seminary we had something called the apostles creed The Apostles' Creed, now I'm not, I'm not, I know that I'm speaking to people across different denominations, but I wish there was a way you could find for me and project what we call the Apostles' Creed on the screen. If you can find that thing, media, I promise to give you a big hug. That for me represents about the most accurate or at least commendably accurate presentation of the believers creed this is a summary of what we stand for this is who a christian is it's important we know that 
Met some of you here are owners or directors or senior executives around companies and you have all kinds of creeds is that true that you compel your staff to learn to indoctrinate them to understand why they are here whether it's a creed towards efficiency a creed towards excellence team spirit whatever it is please find it for me if you can i apologize for putting you under this inconvenience but it's important so we're dealing with doctrine and discipleship we are not in ministry truly if we are not teaching doctrine do the believers under your care are they still in doubt that jesus christ is god do they know that hold on before we begin to teach all of the mysteries of this and that just calm down leave that we're going there do our members know that jesus is lord do they understand redemption can we random pick one member and bring him up stage and say give us your understanding about the substitutionary sacrifice of christ which is the foundation you will be amazed at how many of our workers respectfully speaking deacons and even some of us men of god we may not be able to articulate redemption how about prayer how about faith the bible says in this kingdom the just lives by his faith how about the body of christ how about resurrection do our members know that jesus is coming back do they know the benefit of being saved the reason why there are hardly altar calls on our pulpit is not because we are bad it's because we ourselves need a reorientation about the value the bible says there is no other name given unto man under heaven by which we must be saved are we together what of the holy spirit do our members understand the holy spirit do they understand the priesthood ministry of a believer do they understand the responsibility that makes for kingdom advance thank you thank you let's give these people a big big god bless you ladies and gentlemen that right there is a very serious creed i hope i'm able to see everything as clear as i want to but let me attempt to read it am i boring you this is a pastor's conference i know impartation is coming but you just pay attention the oil is useless when there is no vessel remember it is the vessel that gives credence to the oil i believe in god the father almighty it says the maker of heaven and earth is that true and jesus christ his only son our lord that is true but i may edit that now because he's not the only son again he was the only son but now he's the first of we the begotten you see that now he's not god's only son now mm -mm. he was his only son but now he's called many sons into glory he was conceived by the holy spirit how shall these things be seen that you know not a man he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you oh beautiful thank you born of the virgin mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead. It's important you know he was crucified. He did not just die. If he just died, he could not have been a curse. Because the law says, curse is every man who hangs on a tree. If he died on the ground, he would be a dead man. He needed to die on the tree. So the crucifixion of Jesus is a major aspect of the Christian life. He died. You have to believe he died. If he did not die then there is no way he would have collected the keys that we gave adam revelations one i was he that was dead and now he's alive and i hold the keys it was his death that gave him the entrance when sinners die where do they go to so the only way he had to go to hell being a righteous man was to become sin so that if he died it will now give him the the entrance to go to the place of the dead are we together now he died as you and me what would have been our future so he went there 
and when he met satan the bible tells us paul was teaching us the the drama that happened there in hades that when he got to hell my goodness did you know that satan did not even understand the strategy when he died all of a sudden celebration was to start in hell and then they see this man jesus christ went to hell without the assistance of the holy ghost i hope you know that he went as man in the strength of man that's what made him the second adam he went there and the bible says all the demons and principalities were on him forcing him to bow what is him bowing acknowledging lordship because jesus being the express image of the father the word are we blessed this is what makes us different from different religions there are many religions that teach what we teach to this is the dividing line do you know why we need to restore doctrine to the body of christ otherwise after many years of laboring we will not know who is a christian again and the devil is an expert he will keep bringing pseudo christian expressions until we lose the conscience it's already happening to many people So he went and when the legal claims of justice were satisfied, the Bible says he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. And he did not just stop there. He now went to Satan and he said, give me the keys. What keys? The keys that came from Adam through Eve to him. Are you seeing that now? And when he collected the keys, the Bible tells us, that there were saints who were then abraham's bosom i don't want to bring any controversy but your bible people you know and apostle peter taught us that he went there and preached to them when he preached to them he gave them a chance to believe when they believed he opened the prison gates he said follow me when he resurrected it's in your bible he was the first begotten and then other saints came through the streets of jerusalem they saw them the hymn says up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph all his foes he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign i know it's old school but not every old school is old are we blessed So when he resurrected, a woman came and met him. This solves the problem once and for all should women be in ministry. The first person to see Christ resurrected was a woman. He says, go and tell Jesus, go and do ministry. Go and tell. He's the one who instructed her. Go and tell. There is a protocol to it though. The Bible always says they do it in subjection. But to negate, no, when it has to do with the ministry of the word, there is neither male nor female. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. It's one new man in Christ. Are we blessed now? Please pay attention. These are the truths that give you a defense system against Satan. The Bible says no weapon fashioned. Do you know what it means to fashion? To fashion means to write a summary of your strengths and your weaknesses and build an arsenal from your weakness. So when the devil wants to attack, he does not just come. He fashions the weapon. What do you not know? What is not known in your church? Oh, you don't know this. You don't know this. Build the weapon after this weakness. It says no weapon fashioned. Are we together? when jesus christ resurrected listen to me the bible says he was raised up for our justification what does it mean to be justified to be declared not guilty but his resurrection was not all there was if he was if he resurrected and he stopped there we are saved from sin but we are still in trouble because he needed to go to heaven to perform his high priestly duty remember he said no don't touch me don't corrupt the program I need to ascend to heaven so he went there both as the lamb and as the high priest the bible tells us because according to the jewish tradition the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement 
So for it to be an eternal atonement, the ageless lamb, he now became the lamb. He used his own age now. So for you to know how long the atonement is, is to know the age of the lamb that died. You see that now. And when he was done, a coronation service was held for him in heaven. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand. That was a coronation service. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Permit this mind to be in you, the Bible says, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who although being God did not consider it robbery, this and that, but that he died the death on the cross. And the Bible says, wherefore, by reason of this, God had so highly exalted him. And given him a name. The name is an office. He gave him an office. And that office was exalted above every other name. That at the mention of that name. Every knee. Listen, if you don't know this, your members will not be powerful. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. It's not what you are saying. It's the understanding that supports that activity. That releases the power. Please let me have four people. Just come. Let me use you. Four, any four gentlemen, come. Watch this. Just stand here. Look at this, everybody. Do you know what Jesus did? Just, just stand facing me. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Imagine that I am a PhD older, but the limitation is that I have PhD alone. Are we together? And then my assignment is to make all these guys PhD holders. But they don't have the strength to go through that system. So what I did was I gave up my PhD. I went back to nursery school. Remember, I always had it. I went back to nursery school. And then I just told them, follow me closely. I started, come guys. And then when I now got to master's, just when I was going to write the PhD exam, I said, hold on. Before you give me that exam, guys, everything I'm going to be doing is for us. I changed the name from me to us. Now I wrote that exam. The examiner did not even know what was happening. As soon as I got the PhD, PhD appeared on all of them. And I took them here. Come. I took them back to where I originally was. So you will ask, so you had PhD. Why did you leave it and get it again? Because of these guys. I had it alone. But I didn't want to have it alone. That's what Jesus did. Everything he now has, he always had. But the question is, alone. So he came back, gave up everything and started afresh. This time around, with you in covenant. This is what Paul understood. He says we have been raised up and we have been made to sit back where he always was. But now together with him above far above thrones dominions every name that is named not only in this world but in the world to come this is the gospel thank you if you do not understand this it didn't make sense for Jesus to leave the glory he had with the father come back and get it back why do a coronation service was he not always Lord alone this is where the love of the father is revealed please sit down what then is the gospel of salvation let me tell you the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus his son man being the zenith the object of that love alongside creation the law is that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have zoe is called not just eternal life everybody has eternal life what we're giving is not eternal life it was an error in translation eternal life means life without end everybody keeps living even after this world when you preach you don't ask people will you spend eternity the question is location they will spend eternity Let's finish our Apostles' Creed. Can we have it again? The Bible says, He's seated at the right hand of the Father. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The word Catholic there does not necessarily mean Roman Catholic. It means the universal church. If you don't believe the body of Christ, you will never have balance in your life. There are four encounters you must have to be a balanced believer and a balanced minister. One, the encounter with the Son of God. Two, the encounter with the office and the person of the Holy Spirit. Three, the encounter with the word of God. Four, the encounter with the body of Christ. I believe in the body of Christ. I believe in the communion of the saints. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the resurrection of the body. I believe in the everlasting life. This, for me, is a very fair representation of the believer's creed. There are many other expressions of it across different ministries. But I'm saying that we need to return back to doctrine and discipleship. Don't just ordain people because they have stayed long in church. And you say, just keep watching. Prepare for the next. Because, of course, I know that we need more people. We need to send more laborers, but we have to be careful. This is the reason why we continue to send people who have not been worked on on the spirit. And after one, two years, they keep causing us pain because they carry their flesh and their limitation and they now impede a work that you've invested so much in. Hallelujah. We have to pray. We've not even done church growth. I promised us that we would do church growth. Unfortunately, we may not, I'm not sure that we may have that time but can i just run through four keys to church growth please be patient i know that we have service many of us need to go and prepare the key to church growth is found in mark chapter one mark chapter one now there are different there are different perspectives when it has to do with church growth now that we understand that we should focus on the exegesis of doctrine our experiences and our personalized dealings can only just be support systems but we must return to the doctrine of scripture that builds that matures that makes mark chapter 1 let's begin our reading from verse 21 please mark chapter 1 and verse 21 we are learning the principles of church growth by studying the ministry of jesus himself be patient as we read. Ready? The Bible says, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue. Help me. And so keep that in place. We're studying Jesus now. He entered the synagogue, and the Bible tells us what he did there. He taught. We see teaching as part of the key. Next verse. And they were astonished at his doctrine. So we know what he taught. What did he teach? Doctrine. Pay attention. We are piecing together the keys that make for church growth. Irrefutable keys that will work for anyone, regardless ministry, regardless what dimension of the fivefold you are involved with. The Bible says, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Next verse, please. The Bible says, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. Take note now. This is church. And the Bible says, And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. So we see Jesus casting out demons. 26. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice he came out of him as a result the bible says and they were all amazed how many were amazed please talk to me there are certain things that when they happen on earth men can never commonize them it is not given to men to trivialize certain manifestations of the power of god it will always compel people to know that god is at work in a place follow carefully they were astonished among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit and they do obey him take note we're studying jesus now 
what happened immediately please look up believers and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout the region round about galilee so here is a man who came in as an individual into a temple he did certain things and by the next day the whole city is talking about him we're talking of growth here the principles and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue he entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john 30 and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they take him up. Uh -huh. and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left and she ministered unto them now you watch this the difference between this miracle and the one that happens in a crusade ground is that this is happening among church workers we are examining the key to church growth it is easy to preach in a crusade and have wheelchairs stand up and your workers are saying we've not experienced this thing ourselves he came to peter's house and the same power worked there do you know what it means for your workforce to believe in you to know that this anointing does not just work for strangers this grace also works here it is on the strength of their conviction everyone who comes he knows that you're not just acting 32 and at evening, when the sun did set, hallelujah, they brought unto him. Don't ask people to come. Find out whether you can do something about what they are coming with. They brought unto him. Would you love members like this? Brothers and sisters, these are the kind of members who are calling. Do you love members like this? Lord, I want increase. Get ready for these people. These are the kinds of people coming. Are we ready? Number one, all that were diseased. Number two, all that were possessed with devils. Don't think God is just going to send made people. Oh no. You want increase? You must be ready for work. These were the people who came to Jesus. 33. And the city. Hallelujah. You want the city to be gathered? Let me describe how the city looks for you. There are a few intelligent people, there are a few wealthy people, and many sick people, and many broke people, and many confused people, and many angry people, and many jealous people, and many possessed people. And the Bible mandates that you welcome them. Could there be a reason why increase is not coming? It's an act of God's mercy and warning to you. You really want this? Are you prepared? 34. Look Jesus now. He healed many that were sick of diverse diseases. And cast out many devils. And suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Be patient with me. We're almost there. The Bible says and the impact over those people were so much. In the morning, what a man. How would you finish such a spectacular crusade and have the gods to go back and leave people and pray? I show you the secret to church growth. Can you enjoy such fame and such glamour a few hours earlier and have the audacity to go away from all the press men and leave everybody and say, I'm going back to where the power came from. I wish we had time to walk these things. I'm just summarizing. The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. A world that loves to be celebrated, to be seen. Will you have that time? When people come for a crusade ground, for a crusade and there are wheelchairs, crutches, will you still be able to go back and say, Lord, your boy is still here. I'm not confused. You used me, but I'm still here again. 36 and simon and all they that were with him followed him when you have results people will do what you do and when they had found him they said unto him may this be your testimony all men you've heard me say it there are things when you carry only the rich look for you there are things when you carry only the poor look for you there are things when you carry only the educated look for you. There are things when you carry only young people look for you. 
There are things you carry only the older people look for you. But there are graces when you can get in the place of prayer. All men, all men, including your partners, all men, including your helpers, including your lieutenants, all men, including destiny helpers, all men, seek for thee. A few more verses and we're done. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. So we see preaching. For therefore came I forth. Next verse. He preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee. And again we see him repeating it. He casted out devils. Uh huh. And there came a leper to him. Beseeching him and kneeling down before him saying unto him. If thou wills thou can make me clean. Read on please. The Bible says and Jesus moved with compassion. Put forth his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be thou clean. Next verse. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. And straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away. 44. And said unto him, See that thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show yourself to the priest, offer for your cleansing the things which Moses commanded, and for a testimony. That man was too grateful to be silent. Next verse. But he went about. If it is a genuine miracle, not even your humility will stop people from letting the city know. Jesus begged this man and said, look, I, I know what the crowds would do, but the man was too grateful. He began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in the desert place and they came to him from every quarter. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, from all over this city, everywhere people must come to to hear the counsel of the lord in your life i call them forth in jesus name please sit down church growth jesus preached the gospel jesus taught scripture he taught the word jesus performed the he allowed for extraordinary manifestations of miracles signs wonders including the casting out of devils the healing of the sick jesus used the power and the principles of the kingdom alongside the prophetic to provide supernatural solutions to the needs of men whoever does this it is impossible to be alone now you preach the gospel you teach the word an accurate exegesis of scripture then you allow for the unusual manifestation of miracles signs and wonders let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered but people are not only sick and oppressed you will need to engage the principles of the word and the power of the prophetic to provide supernatural solutions to the need of men this was the template jesus gave us I know that there are books about church growth and I show my profound respect. But believe me with all humility, the man standing before you has experienced the mercy of God on that wise. I'm not speaking in ignorance. I know what it means to experience a city come to hear the counsel of the Lord upon your life. There is no such thing as I was destined to be small. No. Our call is a high calling and it's a noble call. Are we together now? Within the few minutes that we have, we are going to pray. And I trust God that something from heaven will come upon us. We have come as several men and women of God. Some of you have served in the kingdom for a very long time. We have fathers of faith here, veterans of the gospel who have spent decades lifting up the name of Jesus. I saw so many people outside, so many inside. There are so many following from every nation and I know that you have come to hear but you have also come to receive 
I wish I had time to teach on the supernatural ministry because there is nobody who is called to do ministry ordinarily no it's like saying you want to light a matchbox you want to light matches with water no you can't light matches by rubbing the matchbox on water it would not work is that true so saying my own ministry is an ordinary ministry it's not so the gospel is the power of god even unto salvation there needs to be miracles signs and wonders it is true that not all of us may operate at the same frequency but it's important that we're committed to teaching the gospel preaching the gospel clearing what jesus has done to the end that men be saved then we teach the word we teach scriptures in a methodical and intelligent life applicable manner that will cause all and sundry to listen and you can find the point of action from your gospel they can take that truth and by the next day they are willing to apply it and then to see it work nobody leaves what works but in all your teaching and preaching you must know that there is a dimension of the supernatural that must be captured in your ministry signs and wonders are powerful they let men know that god is with you they let men know that god is alive miracles healings deliverances but more than that people need to experience supernatural solutions this is where the value of a man of god is most times society frowns at ministers as though we're a nuisance to civilization we are valuable our value is spiritual in context number one we are connecting people to faith number two we are bringing ideas that are referenced from scripture that help to build their understanding build the moral the moral fabric of society and then to help people achieve results the key to fulfillment is progress. People must know that their lives are finding meanings while they live. And the church is that bridge of hope. And then we stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit to provide supernatural solutions to the needs of men. That is value. Deserving of a reward. Deserving of honor. So you're a man of God. You have to stand tall. Do not allow society and the context of culture and the status quo bully you into thinking you are just a nuisance. A wicked nuisance to live in. Shut down the church for one year and see what becomes of society. Where will the power come from? Where will the intercession come from? Where will the counsel and the guidance come from? When will the building and the maturing come from? We are valuable always. No wonder he calls us the salt of the earth. He calls us the light of the world. He says, we are a city that is set on a hill. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But right now for tonight, we have to stop here. And pray that something from heaven comes upon us. We took our time to cry a cry of repentance in the morning for purging, for cleansing, so that God will redirect our minds. Can I tell you this? I believe with all my heart that there are some of you, what you are doing now compared to what you will be doing from now is just a rehearsal. By the time the power of God comes upon you, you will do ministry in a way that will bring glory to the name of the Lord and will bring honor to you, the vessel. There is no limit to how far we can go in Christ. But you are only a blessing not just when men come, but when they live with joy. Jesus said, do not leave them to go hungry. Who else can feed them? They said, no, 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 we cannot afford this. And they brought five loaves and two fish, turned it and fed all of them. Simon Bajona, do you love me more than this? Prove that you love me by feeding my sheep and feeding my lamb. By the time weak people come to your church and one month just one month under your mentorship the kind and the quality of spiritual information that you communicate backed up by the supernatural power of the holy spirit they return with strange testimonies a family that no door has opened for for 15 years they meander into your church just on a week a midweek service just five minutes prayer they return back and all those begin to open as though they were programmed 
they will say like that woman come see a man come see a man let me tell you this do not downplay the power of personal testimony it's one thing to bring an arbitrary testifier that nobody knows when a popular madman in Port Harcourt comes under the influence of the power of God fire falls from heaven during your crusade ground and that person becomes your chief usher everybody knew him when he was lying down now he's the chief usher how dare the devil say the power of God is not in your assembly listen to me believers men and women of God with all due respect I came to challenge you tonight there is more that we need to do across the south south across Port Harcourt here there is so much we need to upgrade to a higher level of power and fire there are principalities the arsenals of darkness continue to group themselves to see that they discredit the power of God God is saying where are the people that must arise that every altar by Sunday is blazing with fire regardless the denomination these demons as they are leaving this assembly they want to land on this church fire is sending them again There is an avalanche of salvation. People on the streets breaking down and wondering what is wrong. You just shook hands with a man of God you met at the marketplace. And just that handshake destroyed 10 years captivity. Then God leads you to someone. You pray for him. The Lord bless you. And a contract that has been tied for 10 years, 15 years. All of the monies is released. He will be too grateful to forget you. Can I tell you how funding comes from ministry? Listen, there's no point hiding it. It's, it's not some superstitious things. The blessing of the Lord comes from those who have been impacted by that grace. Don't look for wealthy people. Make them through the grace of God upon your life. that someone comes and in two weeks whilst he's loving the Lord whilst he's knowing the Lord a promotion that is due 10 years for some tribal sentiments and the fire that comes from your altar burns that chaff into pieces that man is lifted and promoted the man will vow and say as you move I move with you whatever is your project just let me know can I tell you this everybody on earth including those who have been greedy to you they are givers they only have not considered you to be worth their giving the same person who will refuse to give you money and fund your ministry will come back to a man of god and say sir can i have the privilege of giving you 100 million for the church project he was not greedy you are just not on fire enough to be worth his money I know we've spent time please can i have the oil something is about to come upon your life tonight thank you sir this is cooking oil you can use it to fry egg you can use it to fry yam there is no power in this thing on its own oil does not anoint oil only anoints when it is anointed there's no point idolizing it this is ordinary oil women use this to cook use this to do all kinds of things but hear me people of God I do not stand here tonight as one who claims to be sufficient in myself but I want to tell you something I have tasted of the grace of God I know what God can do with men many of you have come here with hearts opened there are graces that are coming tonight the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied please listen to me some of you have fasted and you have prayed and you have said God I know there has to be more to you I'm a prophet but this thing is, is as if my is as if my office is a reproach to me everything you say is a lie your name is John no I'm Ezekiel you have two children no I don't even have any children and you stand there and God truly called you what of those who are here who are bleeding members come they receive and they leave have you seen that kind of thing they come you pray for them you fast and then they leave when they have the breakthrough they stand up 
and go somewhere else Paul says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you this man standing before you is a product of many anointings this anointing is like a relay we have also received it from those who went ahead of us one time I had the honor and the privilege of being in Daddy Joe's prayer room alone and when I lay down there on the ground I said oh God the only thing I'm asking is the covenant of answered prayer that you have with this man let it come upon my life I left there knowing knowing that the lives of people will begin to change let me tell you this when you tell people God bless you they shout amen they are watching to see if nothing happens their amen will suddenly become a mockery to you because they themselves know that nothing will happen can I tell you this except God is not God but there is no one sitting under the sound of my voice who will return back to ordinary ministry again believe me there will be such a baptism of fire in this place this is what I want you to do I'm going to pray on this oil please listen including those outside so we make it fast I will lay my hands on this oil and pray and they'll just pass it around just dip your hands you I'm not even well I don't know how you're going to do it but let's just okay fine please I will pray and then we'll put it the leaders you don't have to just be patient they will get to you just place it on your head place it on your hand fire in tongues place it on your head on your hands Lord I'm leaving this realm financially spiritually some of you you have seen yourself walk in signs and in wonders but not to the degree that brings glory to the name of the Lord one headache per year will not do much for the kingdom can I tell you this some of you after this impartation you need to run back to your families and say I've come with a new anointing the challenge that did not give way yesterday Saul is not the weak man looking for his father's ship again he has met with Samuel the Bible says he returned and they said he's Saul also one of the prophets do not sit down thinking we are just acting with the childlike faith of a minister I want you to believe this and you will watch the wonder working power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit are you ready to pray in one minute Lord my life is changing let fire come upon my destiny please pray please pray please pray please pray let's be serious Are you praying? Lift up your ministry before the Lord. It's time for a new dimension. hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the Lord we anoint this in the name of Jesus we release it as an instrument of signs and wonders we release it as an instrument of restoration we release this oil as a weapon of judgment that everything sitting on your destiny that is not of God as this oil comes on you in the name of Jesus Christ the same way there was judgment in Egypt there must be judgment this night in the camp of the enemy please go ahead sir. everyone please pray just pray in the spirit outside pray in the spirit following online 
you have a bottle of oil you can bring it out and just connect by faith are you praying overseers pray presidents pray evangelists pray Shkatabarakatos. some of you are leaders of prayer groups pray you're about to contact fire for the next level oh it's a new season remember not the former things nor consider the things of old nor consider the shame of old nor consider the reproach of old behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing Behold, I do a new thing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Behold, I do a new thing. Please pray, please pray. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you we lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb. Pray for you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the it's a new season of signs of wonders supernatural worship ministry supernatural music ministry supernatural evangelism supernatural apostolic ministry There are shouts of adoration I see men from every nation Lift their voice to make your glory known Singing, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Holy, holy, holy are you Saints and the angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. 
Don't be tired. Don't be tired. This will be your certain day tonight. Begin to prophesy to your ministry a new level in the name of Jesus. A new level of salvation. A new level of transformation. A new level of kingdom impact. Pray for your family, for your husband, for your wife, for your children. Pray for the South South. Pray for Portacot. Coming with fire, renewed fire. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen, 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 we're not done. I want to pray for you. But I want to do something prophetic right now. Pastor Larry, please can I have six other pastors with you inclusive just to come and stand here with me, anyone at all you. We're going to stand prophetically representing the body of Christ over Portacot and over the South South. Listen. The days of disunity and fighting, backbiting, tearing down one another, we have to declare that those days come to an end. Sir, please. Listen to me. Please look up, everyone. Can I tell you this? Unity does not mean uniformity. In truth, I admit that there are issues with the body of Christ. It's not new. It is still the body of Christ. If a man's wife is sick, does she stop being his wife? Are we together? Listen to me. For a long time, it looks like this sense of unity, it is difficult to attain it. Why? Because we bring all kinds of prejudices. I am anointed. I have more revelation. I have more money. I have more members. You may be right, but you will still not win. In the body, you don't win just because you are right. God connected us to ourselves. And can I tell you this? It may look like we are taking one step after another. But by the privilege of God's grace, where our fathers have done their best, we are not the ones who will come and fail a generation. We have to learn to look. Listen, the key to unity is an understanding of mutual honor. A communication of mutual honor I cannot have unity I can't show this man we cannot be united when I'm there talking about him tearing him down downplaying the grace of God upon his life just because God has helped me in a measure does not mean we use our gifts and that which God has given us to tear down he must acknowledge what God has done in my life and not frown at it. Don't see results and act as if it's not results you are seeing. There's nothing to be ashamed of. However, if people clap for you for the results, be wise enough to know that it's not ordinarily human for people to just bend over backwards to acknowledge you. You must be wise enough to reciprocate it. Oh, you are the great man of God they are talking about. It's an honor, sir. I also appreciate and honor God's grace upon your life. You see, the moment we introduce mutual respect, because some of you now, respectfully speaking, have been mentored to look down on certain men of God, certain denominations. The people that mentored you may not be wrong, but they are inaccurate. That theology never wins. There is a level of power that the body of Christ must present that no single man can present the best of us is an effective member of the body are we together and so i'm asking these great servants of god representing the body of christ we want to stand in unity and pray and say father we are tired of this unity yes it is true that some of us have issues and god is helping it is true that some of us have not seen the light to certain degrees but it's too small a reason to cause a division 
Don't go around mentoring people to trivialize a man of God. Rejoice in when evil happens. You are raising the same people who will fight you tomorrow with the same mentality you are giving them. We must learn to celebrate one another. I pray that a time will come in Port Harcourt where a man of God is organizing a crusade and even if it's not your ministry, you can pay for 100 buses and say, let souls be saved. Just tell him a man of God, he doesn't need to know me. Where someone will come and use his resources and complete the building of a church for another ministry and just bless them and not demand anything in return. It is for this cause he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists. Listen, let's not allow our ego and our selfishness punish our children. Even if we do not love ourselves, let's think of the precious gifts there are people watching our lives in the next 10 years in the next 20 years in the next 30 years when the fathers that we see now have joined the cloud of witnesses if if christ tarries it will still be us when we're coming up we insulted the fathers we abused them now the baton is in our hands and see how we are messing up doing the same thing we were once insulting listen our gifts must be garnished with self-control and maturity and order and honor for the body you dishonor the body there is a punishment the bible says for this cause many are weak for this cause many are do sleep they are sick they are weak and they do sleep where if someone comes to gossip about a man of god and his church you tell him no 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 if you are not here just to pray for the person walk out of my house my house will not be a habitation of hatred and gossip now the people you are mentoring will watch you from a distance wow they see the purity of what you are teaching and how you are living are we together i can tell you this before christ comes for as long as he gives us the grace and the privilege for life we will use the grace, the influence, and all it takes to say, body of Christ, we are not calling you to do the same thing, but we are calling you to present to the world a matured bride. We must grow out of the childishness of fighting one another and mentoring people to antagonize people. No. If you don't like the prophetic, that's all right. But don't insult it and tear it down if you don't like the teaching ministry that's all right but don't insult it and tear it down don't say that man only teaching 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 no power let it not come from you if you think he needs power pray for him buy the books that relate to power and give him as a seed that's a better approach show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient paths? Will you lead us along eternal highway? Every man of God, no matter how wrong, is sincerely believing he's doing his best. Intercede and say, Lord, open their eyes to see greater. But don't stand and look down at people. No. Don't tear down men of God. Don't use your pulpit as a platform. There are many, many messages to preach. Don't be envious. You hear that God is lifting someone. Oh, May God bless you. I'm happy. Hear that this is happening in the ministry. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord keep it. If the person looks down on you and says, no problem, leave him to his trouble. You have done yours. Please, is it okay? I know that. Can we hold hands together? We are going to pray prophetically. Body of Christ. Listen. We are standing here representing the city of Port Harcourt. I know there are fathers across the south south veterans of the gospel but these are the ones that are available here this baton was given to us we should not fail it does not take perfection to win it takes maturity father we stand here 
at this South South Convention here at House on the Rock, Port Harcourt. And I'm holding hands, oh God, with servants, men of God. And we stand as a united body across this city and across this region. Lord, we admit that our levels of transformation may differ. We admit that our levels of accuracy and alignment to spiritual things may differ. We admit that our levels of obedience and compliance to your principles may differ. We agree that the levels of grace that we operate on differ. But Lord, we choose by understanding and maturity to love one another, to serve one another, to help one another, to pray for one another, to cry with one another, to stand with one another, to comfort one another in the name of Jesus. We will never rejoice at the downfall of one another. We stand as a united bride. Even though wounded, we are still your bride. And Lord, we lift up this voice. We pray in the name of Jesus. Over Potakot, your kingdom come. Over Potakot, a fresh reign of revival. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for every church, every assembly, ever, ever, every evangelistic outfit, every prophetic platform, every prayer group. We decree and declare fresh fire on your altar. Those who have made mistakes, those who have derailed on the path of righteousness and the gospel, we pray mercy over their lives that by the privilege of God's grace, you will help them to be restored. Those who are walking accurately, we pray for the grace for continuity and the grace to finish strong. We pray for the younger ministers. May we not mentor you wrongly. In the name of Jesus, where we have made mistakes, we, are, we release grace upon you to move greater and more accurate than we have walked in. The same way the fathers showed us their scars to help us rise more accurately. In the name of Jesus, may you climb upon our scars and do ministry more efficiently. We decree and declare that every assembly becomes a place of salvation. We decree and declare that every assembly becomes a place of transformation. We decree and declare that every assembly becomes a place of miracle signs and wonders. We declare that every assembly becomes a place for nation building. Every assembly becomes a house of prayer. I pray, oh God, that you will raise mighty men and women from our assemblies. Satan, we speak to you over this region. You have failed. In the name of Jesus. The edge that you've had over the church as a result of disunity, as a result of divide, we close that door by the blood of the Lamb. As a united church, the bride of Christ, we stand and we declare the victory that has been given to us in Christ, we establish it upon this land. Port Harcourt, you are God's own state. South, South, you are God's own region. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that every tree that has not been planted by God, we stand in unity right now over families, over businesses, over careers. We uproot it in the name of Jesus. Let there be love among pastors. Some of you after tonight, after a long time, you may want to send a text to a man of God here. And say, I know that we've had issues, but I love you. I love you sincerely. I love you sincerely. It was an issue of land, but I still love you. It's over. Let's push it. We have children who are learning from us. It is only the living that can praise God. Can I tell you this? Very soon, Jesus is coming. I assure you and I preach it to you afresh. When he comes, it's the same heaven we're all going to. Therefore, Lord, we declare, let the unity of the church in Port Harcourt never be broken again. And anyone who steps into this city to disunite the body, we close the borders of this city towards them. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
every assembly is flourishing with membership flourishing with prosperity flourishing with abundance of revelation flourishing with character flourishing with godliness in the name of Jesus Lord we pray that you honor every man and woman of God in this city they that labor in word and in doctrine many of them have sacrificed their families they have sacrificed time with their children we pray for the workers also because we are men of God but we don't do everything by ourselves Lord we pray for our precious workers these are people who before we wake up they are in church and after we are gone they are still left behind we pray that you will bless them we do not take them for granted we ask for mercy where we have trivialized them we declare that they are truly important and we do not look down on them the church is growing in this region we pray this in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit amen and amen thank you sirs god bless you let's celebrate jesus for what he's doing in this land now lift your hands let me speak over you we're wrapping up in the name that is above all names i declare the grace that you need for the next season of your life I stretch my hands upon you and I pray may that grace come upon your life now hear me every limitation impeding the growth of your church your prayer group your evangelistic platform your family your business I stand and call upon the God of my covenant in the name of Jesus we dethrone those forces we dethrone those forces in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here appointed unto death we declare oh grave where is your victory and oh death where is your sting I speak long life and prosperity to you every man of God here currently going through a building project in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work we release a finisher's anointing on your project in the name of Jesus Christ where men have mocked your God and said where is the evidence of serving God I place something upon your life today go and walk signs and wonders open doors in the name of Jesus and let me pray for you whatever has killed your prayer life whatever has killed your appetite and your passion for spiritual things that this was not how you started eventually you became distracted i pray for you tonight fire from heaven may it land upon your life prayer fire word study fire worship fire in the name of jesus christ and as you depart from this place tonight in the name of Jesus on your way to your homes and your stations meet with signs and wonders meet with testimonies tomorrow here in this city may every altar catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise tonight. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekato Kata Branda Kata Pakotosko to break a take and look at her. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.